A humanitarian and genocidal catastrophe is unfolding before our very eyes in northern Iraq. Jihadist extremist group Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS, swept across most parts of Sunni Iraq in June, seizing the second biggest Iraqi city, Mosul, as well as the birthplace of Saddam Hussein, Tikrit. Now, over the weekend, they seized Sinjar, who have a Yazidi minority. Uh, this Yazidi minority have fled into the surrounding hillsides. They've now been surrounded by uh, the Islamic State. And as a, the, Gabriel, the number is about 40,000, at least 40,000 of these cities. Oh. Most of them have actually fled uh, and gone into other parts of, of, of semi-autonomous semi -autonomous Kurdish Iraq. But the, majority, the others who have left, there's at least 40,000 of them. They're stuck in a variety of different mountain regions and they're faced with the horrible choice of either dying of dehydration or of being killed by the Islamic State uh, Sunni uh, Islamic extremists um, who have encircled where they've fled to. It's unimaginable what's going on. Um, the Yazidis are one of the oldest, they're about 2,000 years old ethnic minority in Iraq, in the region. They're, they're, they're quite an enigmatic religion. Um, they're a blend of Islam and, and Christianity. And, and Zoroastrianism, correct. which is part of what's so interesting about this because it's putting a human face on yet a new enemy of the, of the Islamic State. The victims of the unrest in the Middle East are not just Jews and Arabs, local populations, but even Christian sects and other religions that are distasteful to the Islamic State. Um, this borders on what some people are calling genocide. It might be genocide de facto in the sense that you know a large population is being displaced and killed. Right. It's deeply tragic and very disturbing, and the numbers alone are insane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these cities, they're viewed by uh, these extremists as devil worshippers and apostates, which they're not. Um, but because they, are, they don't conform to the, their extremist views, um, that's how they're being labeled. The, uh, the lone Yazidi parliamentary representative earlier this week implored to their government and to the parliamentary, uh, to parliament to send in aid. And she said the following quote, children have died because of dehydration and lack of food. We are being slaughtered. Our entire religion is being wiped off the face of the earth. I am begging you in the name of humanity. We expected more from the future of Iraq, but we're not getting it. No, I mean, it's a failed state, um, but to say that there's a failed state is, is a, you know, understatement. Bo borders on, yeah, a, a banal understatement. Uh, the, there's a number of photographs, some of you guys may or may not have seen them uh, around the, on the internet, um, of just hordes of these people, and I, I, I hate to use that word, but numbers of these people, and your cities and uh, Shia alike, being rounded up and just uncertain and just killed. Um, and uh, they put a number of these photographs on their Twitter account. Uh, I saw some of them and, and they're truly troubling and we've not deliberately not showing some of these photographs because they're just too graphic with the tagline, uh, quotes, kill them wherever you find them. Uh, it's unimaginable, it really is. The, the UN have sent in um, uh, some, some they've, they've, dropped, they've dropped in some aid to tr in, a, in an endeavor to help these people. They've dropped in some aid, so some, some fundamentals so some water and some food, and, and at least trying to give the people there some succor. But at the moment, the situation looks pretty desperate. I think there was some talk this morning I heard about the Americans potentially sending uh, airstrikes in or to, to facilitate and to help. But at the moment, it just seems as though they're, they're stranded. That's right. It is interesting that the, the US almost can't quite get out, uh, certainly not cleanly. We're still tied to this place, right. if only on a humanitarian level. But the offer to send in what seems to be about 15 to 20 flights to sustain these people, which, which would only last a week, tragically, um, that offer actually hasn't been taken up yet. And that's what's a little bit curious about this. I don't know if it's a self-preservation thing or an inability to communicate with the outside world, but the offer is there and they haven't said, now we need it. Right, I, but I, I can't imagine that that will go on much longer. Than yeah, and it's just it's just troubling because, as I said, it just it just tracks and charts and demonstrates the human tragedy and the human cost, uh, as well as the unrelenting drive of Islamic State. Uh, and as you've mentioned at the top of the top of the piece, uh, it's it's indiscriminate. So it's Christians. I mean, the Christian uh, the Christian population in, in in this part of the region has been decimated as well. So it's indiscriminate. So um, we're going to continue following this story because it is, it is so tragic, it is so compelling. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts and comments in the section below. And as always, subscribe.
to Lib TV.